Hey guys, welcome back. This is part five. So now we get into some surface details. We will apply color and also render our Krevi. I'm super excited, so let's jump right into it. Um, the first thing I, I see right now that I kind of want to work on the eyes again, because these like pockets feel a little too big. And I don't know, I wanted to try if maybe it would look better if they go like more sideways, you know, like, like so. Kind of looks cool, but I feel it also makes them older. Maybe that's something for, uh, for Kingler in the second part of this introduction later on. So I think this is good for now, but I will, I mean, this is quite a low resolution mesh. It's even lower. So let's go to like 128, do a Dynamesh and like smoothen it out a little. Use the inflate to make the eyes a little bigger because every time you use like the smooth brush, everything will shrink a little. So I think that's, that's good now. All right, so let's get into some surface detail. I think we've increased the resolution of the bottom part to 156. Yes, and I think we'll do the same for the top part. So let's click on solo and isolate this layer. And then what we'll do is we increase this to 156, do a Dynamesh. And now we have like much more topology to work with. We're at, at 240,000 points now. I'll just use the clay really quick. Maybe use like the smooth brush. If you see like areas where you still see like polygons, but now everything, everything, everything should look quite smooth. Yeah, smooth that area out. I think it looks, looks good. Okay. So I think it was the uh, Damien standard brush that was the first brush where we talked about the alpha. Um, but the thing is like all the brushes ZBrush has, I mean, if you press B, we see like quite a lot of them. I think most of them think of them more like presets, right? You can turn pretty much any brush into another brush just by changing all the, the, the brush and alpha options. So it's, it's more like presets made for you, and then you can make adjustments to pretty much any brush. So let's take the uh, standard brush. And you know that the, the standard brush has like this dots applied, and this is how this brush gets applied to the surface. So if we would choose like an alpha that is quite small, maybe alpha 40, 46, you now can see that the way this brush is applied is like, tiny, tiny dots, but we won't see these dots when we don't have an alpha applied and our brush is bigger Then it looks like a line. But what this brush really does, it applies a dot after a certain amount of time or distance. So there's another way to apply. I think, I think freehand has like, even though if it's maybe a small alpha, it should not have like any dots. It's like very, it's, it's much more narrow. That's why even when it's smaller, you can still like, it still feels like a line. But what we want to use is this color spray. Cause now we can spray like all these little dots onto the surface, which already looks like kind of cool. The difference between color spray and spray is that if you look like closely at the icon, all these dots have the same color. 
So they are all like applied with the same intensity. And if you go to color spray, you see that some of them are like gray. And when we use them, you see this looks like this has like a more natural fall off. You know, some points are like much, much weaker. So this looks like much better for surface details because the intensity is just varies. And if you go into like, and if you use this kind of uh, style for brushes, when you, when you paint, you will actually get like different color out of them. But for like sculpting surface details, I really like the spray. So let's do this again. It looks kind of cool. I think I'll even decrease the intensity. We just, we want it to be like, yeah, very, very subtle. And see, and now I just go over the surface in like a circular motion. Because if I would like do strokes like this, you could might end up seeing these strokes, but if you like perform like these little circles, you will not see like any strokes. Yeah, this looks good to me. Okay, so here's a little trick. Um, when you do service details, and I have uh, symmetry applied the whole time, right? So when I go to the middle, you can now like see that it's mirrored. The closer you get to like the center axis, um, you will see that all of this detail is simply mirrored. So what I do is the, the, the closer I get to this center part, um, I simply deactivate symmetry and then sculpt this area. So the symmetry is not as obvious. Okay, this looks good. And we can also do the same with like pressing Alt and instead of little bumps, we get like little crevices. Let's see how this looks like. It's subtle, but I, I, I really like the, uh, the effect. But let's go back because I don't have symmetry turned on anymore. So turn on symmetry. Now press Alt and then You see that we're getting some like more contrast, right? We're getting like these little tiny shadows. And I think this looks really cool. All right, back to the front. Now we turn off symmetry. Okay. So there's another way to apply your brush and that's like drag rectangle. And I really like this as well because now you can like drag points out. I think it's not that obvious with that form. So let's take another, maybe someone with a like greater fall off like this one. I guess the intensity it's not strong enough. Yeah, like this. <laughs> this looks kind of cool. Or like with alt pressed, we have like these little, I know how to call them, but this looks like more like skin or so. No, uh, no, I don't, I don't feel it. I don't think this is what we're going for. Uh, or this kind of shell. This looks like too much like skin. So I'll just go back. I'll like use this undo history and go back. I just wanted to show it to you because I think it's really, really cool to apply detail where you want it. So you can play with all these alphas. So I just turn this off for now. Go back to dots. Yes, I want to remove the history. Okay, so if we turn off solo mode, we see that this actually has done quite a lot. You know, we have like, it's, it's nice to have like these breakup for, uh, for the highlights. Just looks like it's so much more interest. It looks much better. Very cool. 
So we'll do the same for the class. We could isolate them. The claws are also on 128, so we'll go for 265 here as well. I think I used 46, right? <laughs> let's, let's go back to color spray with our alpha. It's way too strong. I think I was at something like 11 or 12. It's, and this is also different, right? If I like really press hard, on the uh, on the tablet, this detail gets like way too strong, but I want it to be like very subtle. And symmetry is not turned on, but that's not a problem because we can use the mirror and weld function. So I would just go in here very, very quick and dirty, just apply these surface details. I'll use this smooth brush down here because I can see some polygons and I don't want that. Then I will apply this brush again. Very subtle. All right, I think this looks good. Now we do the same with like Alt Press to get like these little shadows. And yes, making sounds while sculpting definitely helps. I do it all the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think it's really cool that I forget to turn on symmetry because now you can see like how much of a difference this makes. Yeah, super easy to do. Now what we have to do is mirror and weld and go back, mirror first, then mirror and weld. And now we have it on both sides. Oh yeah, looking good. For the bottom part, um, I kind of like that it looks very, very clean. And we don't see most of it anyway. So I think now I would just use like the uh, inverted, that like just without pressed, you see now this like really looks like shell, right? The surface is quite flat, but then we have like this very, very little, uh, I don't know how to, what, what to call them. At least little dots. Just like little, it's not holes, right? I don't know what to call them, but I think this looks this looks good. Easy. This is also a workflow thing. I really like to group the stuff together that is really alike. You know, now now we've just spent like I don't know five minutes uh, like doing the same thing, right? With the same brush but we applied it to different subtools. And I think this way is like much better instead of like working on one subtool, going further and further and further and keep on sculpting and keep on sculpting. And then you look at your claws and they are still like on a, on a lower resolution and they don't look like finished at all, but you have like the top part finished. I think it's really, really good to group actions that are similar together in your workflow. This is something that comes with experience. Just like have to keep that in your mind. And see, every time I see something I don't like from a perspective, I just switch to the move brush like really quickly. No, no, go one forward. And this is what I love about the move brush. You can keep like tweaking all the time. You can, can't do this in traditional sculpting, right? If you, uh, if your proportions are not working, you can start again, but with digital clay, you can like tweak your proportions at any time. Okay. 
So I think it's time for like the last step here. I thought about like showing you the next brush because it's I think already pretty advanced, but I think it's just too powerful not to show you. And I think this is a brush that was just introduced in the 2020 version. So let's talk about this one. Let's isolate the top part. And now I will use like the standard brush. to sculpt some surface detail, but not with color spray, just with dots. I think the resolution is not enough for what I want to do. Should we go higher? Um, going higher might be too much for some of your computers. But okay, I just wanna wanna show that to you. Now I'll go higher. Because I can see the polygons here, I don't like it. So let's go to 512. And we will have about a million points. That's okay. All right, so now I will. Yeah, we can see that we have more. Choop, choop. Make some surface detail here. And now what we can do is we can use that and create our own brush from it, which is like super powerful. So we go back to like before we started sculpting the surface detail, just about here. And then we activate this or use this extractor brush. So you press B, then go down to this extractor brush, select it. Then we control click on this point. Now you see it's like turned white or gray. This is very important because we tell this brush, like this is where we started sculpting the detail we want to extract. Okay. And then we press H and then we can like grab this area. So I'll make this brush a little bigger so it covers this area. And then when I click on it and drag, you see this little line pops up. And now I've created an alpha from this brush and now see the, the magic happening. Whoa, isn't that cool? I think it's super cool. Look at the difference this makes. It's crazy. And it's so easy to do. We can increase or like apply more pressure here and there to even break up the surface more, more pressure, less pressure, more pressure, less pressure, more pressure, less pressure, more pressure. Yeah, normally I would turn off symmetry for this area here, but for this tutorial, we just want to be quick. Chup, 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 chup. Chup, chup, chup. Chup, 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 chup. Chup, 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 chup. Okay. And now for the center, we turn off the symmetry. All right. A 
I like it. So now we go to the clause, and just do the same. This time I turn on symmetry. Ah, yes, I'll go back because I have not increased the resolution. Let's increase the resolution here as well. Okay. Yeah, much better. See, I'm doing like this circular kind of motion and sometimes applying more pressure, applying less pressure with a tablet. All right, almost done. You see, as I'm getting into the part that the camera will probably not see, I'm getting more messy. <laughs> Just want to finish this pass. You can take your time. You take as much time as you like, but I wanna move on. Okay. This works well. And now what you do is you can actually like go in here, maybe with a clay and then sculpt some additional, oh, I actually like that. Now we do it different. Maybe we do another extractor. Is this my perfectionism kicking in? <laughs> we do like, that's, I just want to know how it, how it looks like. I want to try it. So let's click control click. Have the extractor brush to know that this is the point where we would start from. And then I just paint this little detail here. See, even the, for this detail, the resolution is not enough. I like sharpen the edge a little with the uh, diamond standard. Like so. And now I use the extractor brush again. B, click on the extractor. Cool. And yes, if we do that, we will lose this alpha. But what we could do is we could export the alpha if we want to use it later on. I don't need it. I think this was a quite simple thing to do. Um, so I won't do it, but you can also export these right here. And I think then you can just save them somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So in order to grab this part, press H, make this brush so big that it can cover like this area. And then we click and drag over this detail. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I don't know about you, but I like it. Maybe this works better with a drag rectangle and a higher intensity. I just want to see. This way you would have like more control. Oh, but I, I like the dots. Yeah, I think this is just super fast. 
and I, I mean, I've, I've used them here a lot, but I will use them just here and there, not like too much. But you see, even symmetry is not applied, so I'll do a very, very quick pass of just like applying it here and there. Autosave, yeah, that's good. So let's look at the class, do the same for the class. I will turn off symmetry here. Okay. I like it. <laughs> So now for the uh, arms and legs, I think I'll do the same as for like the bottom part. Let's just click on them. Maybe also increase it to 256. Looks good. Same here to 56. Okay. And I think I'll merge them now. Could split it up if we want. So I just positioned the the arms below the legs by just like clicking on these buttons here. I think it even says it if you like hover over it, move up. This is just selection. This is actually moving them. And now it's below the legs. Now I can go down to merge and press merge down. ZBrush asked me if I want to do it because it's not an undoable operation. I say, okay. And now they're all in one object. Now I can go in here, grab this alpha from, uh, I think it was 42, right? Or? No, it was alpha 46. Just the uh, standard brush. Oh, now I've, <laughs> I've selected this one for the extractor brush. <laughs> if we go back to the extractor, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Just hit, I get the standard choose that it is alpha. Go to our color spray. I think I'll solo here and then just with alt pressed and also symmetry turned on. Let's do like a very, very quick pass here. And then let's see what this looks like. Because they, uh, the legs have the same color as the lower body, so I want them to be like, or to have a same kind of style. This is, this is actually, this is why I'm doing it. I think it could also like look really, really cool to have all these kind of details on the legs as well. But I, I like this about the, design of Krabby that we have like these these two materials. I think it will will look good. Okay. I like it. So let's apply color like really quick. But before apply color we will talk about these uh, mat caps and materials because when you click on here, you see a lot. Um, and it's divided into like two categories. We have the uh, mat cap materials and we have the standard materials. The mat cap materials are basically used for sculpting. Um, they give you, I think they just, they just help. They have their light information baked into the material. So you see like when I'm moving Krabby around, the light will always come like from, from the same side because all this color information is, is baked in here. 
So if I click like on the red wax, you see that the, 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 the main light source is like more in the, in the middle. If I click on this matcap gray, the slide source is like a little more above. So the sliding information is baked in there. And also the color information is baked in there. This is really cool because it's better to see like all the details you're sculpting. So these matcaps are mainly used uh, for sculpting and to give you a better idea. Um, or some of them are like very stylized. So can you can use them uh, for, uh, I don't know, to, to get like different Photoshop layers and effects. Some of them actually look like really cool. Um, but doing BPR renders and utilizing matcaps and standard materials is a whole tutorial on its own. So I will not get into that, but the most important part is this is more for sculpting and these down here are more like for rendering purposes, because if we click on them, these materials actually react to the light inside of ZBrush. Okay, so let's just click on this basic material because it's just white. And then what we can do is pick a color here. So I think red is too red. We'll pick like an orange, more reddish kind of orange here. I think it has to be like a little more intense, but not too intense. And like, like a desaturated orange, I think will not work because we have all this surface detail and it just look like, a, um, I think it just wouldn't look good. I think like more in, higher intensity or saturation is better. Something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. So what we'll do is Below, I have this button like fill object, and this will actually fill this object with color because right now this kind of color is just applied to everything. But if you open your subtool palette, you see like this little brush. And when I click on fill object, this brush will get active. And you also see that this color has been applied to this object. We'll do the same for the claws, just fill object. Okay. And now when we click on the lower body and change the color, all the other subtools will get like these different colors. We get a good representation of what Krabby will look like with color later. I think this is still too dark, right? We want some more contrast. Oh, this is looking good. I like it. Maybe even lighter. This is too light. I love this kind of skin tone. Something like that. Okay, so I click on fill object, alt click on the legs to activate them, click on fill object, nice. So it's looking good. So let's click on the eyes and here we just choose a white fill object. And I think we'll paint the top black. We could also increase the resolution. This is just a, such a small, piece here, I think the resolution will really help. And then we can like use a smooth brush to make it more smooth. Nice. And there's actually a brush just for painting. I mean, we could use like any brush. We could turn off the add and click on RGB to paint like color, but there is an extra brush for painting color. And I really like that. So let's open this one up. It's B, then P, and do you see it? A, B, P, A, and now we have the paintbrush. And you see that the paintbrush, uh, there's Z, add, and Z, sub is both turned off and RGB is turned on. So all this brush does is applying color. So now we can go down to black. I don't know if we turn this like completely black or it's just like a little dot. <laughs> <laughs> this looks so wrong. Uh, let's make our brush bigger. And like, yeah, yeah, this looks much better. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll go. I'll go back in history to look at it again. 
Uh, okay, no, I, I like this one. And now we have colored like crabby, like very, very simple. And I like it. Of course, we could apply more colors, you know, choose another more reddish color. And now start like, you know, painting on the body. Or maybe like for these, all these details we scouted, we could go in here and start painting. This is like very dark. But I don't know, I think that's too much, too much for now. I mean, this is the, the color is also not working, but I don't want to get into, into color now and into painting and spend like an hour, like another 30, 60 minutes, just, uh, painting the texture here. Um, and like more advanced texture painting. I think we could get into that in part two when we deal with Kingler, but I think like for the first part of this introduction, I think this is, this is it. So let's learn how to render what we've just sculpted. So when I showed you the interface, we talked about this button up here, right? BPR, and this is like the best preview render. And this is exactly the button we use for rendering. But before we do that, I'll open up the left tray and then up here in the menu, you see like this render option. So we get that and then drag it over to the left side. And in there we have BPR render pass. So when you click on BPR, you see that we now have like different passes in here we can save, but I don't like the, the shadows. I don't like the light setup. So I will, teach you like very briefly how to choose where the light is coming from, how to do like very, very simple uh, shadow settings, and then we render it and then we're done with like this first part. Okay. So first light source. So let's go up here, click on light and also like dock it into the tray and you see right now, the light is coming from, from the top and like pretty centered. And this is also why we see um, like the, that the shadow is behind the eyes, right? So if we move it like to the side and render again, we should now have our shadow on this side. Yeah, looks better already if you ask me. So you can decide where your shadow should be coming from or your light should be coming from and where the shadow should be cast. This looks very dramatic. <laughs> so just pick something that you like. I will pick the light from like the upper left corner like that, but these shadows are a little too dark. So what we'll do, we will go into the render palette and there is one option for BPR shadow. So what we'll do is we will just decrease the global shadow strength to like, I don't know, 1.7. And also the uh, shadow angle. I think I just go with something like, I don't know, 15, then render again. Yeah, and you see this looks much better. It's not as dark anymore. Maybe we just go for something like 0 0.5. Let's see how this looks like. Yeah, I like it more. I don't want it to be like too dark. And we can also turn on the floor. So Krabby casts a shadow on the floor. I think this will also look better. Yeah, definitely, but it's way too dark. So there's an extra slider for the floor shadow strength. So let's turn this way down like 1.3 and also increase the rays. So right now we can see that this shadow is like very, very it kind of looks weird, right? Because it's uh has like only 12 rays. So let's crank this up to like, I don't know, 60, 70. Hit render again. It's taking more time because with like more rays, it takes more time to calculate. 
Yeah, I like it. This is very subtle. I like it. Okay. So now when we're happy with that, we can go to the BPR render passes and save them. Let's just save this kind of composed layer here. Let me see. Renderings. BPR. Get it here. Get it. BPR. BPR composite. I know. Give it a number. And then we also save the mask. BPR mask. Okay. Nice. And now it's been saved as a PSD. You can also choose to save it as a JPEG immediately. And I think it's very, very important that you make like little renders of your stuff because people often feel like that they're not progressing, but when they can look back at all the stuff they've created, it would be really good. So what I would highly suggest is that you, you know make a folder and then name it like April, May, June, and then put all your renders from that month in there. Even though if it's just like a little a little sculpt you've done, just you know do a very quick render, save it as a JPEG if you don't want to put like uh, much time doing composition in Photoshop, or whatever. Just save a JPEG, put it into that folder. After a year, you will be like very thankful because it will be so cool to see the progress you've made and you can like go back to all the sculpts you did. So uh, I really encourage you to do that. So this is it. This is the end of part one of my introduction to ZBrush. And in the second part, we will sculpt Kingler, the evolution of Krabby. But I suggest that before you go into the second part, take your time maybe a week, maybe two, and just repeat what you've learned. Do a couple of mock-ups, do a couple of sculpts of whatever you want to create and really learn all these tools because it's, you know, these are like a lot of tools. So many brushes, selection, masking, merging, splitting, polygroups. There's so much. Um, so I really highly suggest that you focus a little more on like repetition because, you know, this is also the reason, like, I mean, I've watched Pokemon like more than 20 years ago. <clears throat> and uh, I still remember all the Pokemon names and their attacks and their type. So why do I still remember all these things? Repetition. This whole game was based on repetition. You do like these Pokemon fights over and over and over and over again. So after a while, you just know it all because of repetition. And I think there's also this kind of quote saying like, repetition is the mother of skill. And I think this is partially true. So I think it's, it's very, very nice, like after this intro or this first part of the intro to take your time and do a couple of sculpts before you go into the second part, because the second part will be more advanced. You will learn even more tools and we will talk more about um, the, the workflow of getting like ZBrush or your ZBrush sculpt prepared for other applications like doing Z re, as a like remeshing and decimate as a decimating like your polygon count, um, dealing with UVs and how to export everything. So this will be pretty advanced. It would be like really very nice for you. Um, yeah, just to be already comfortable with all these new tools you've just learned. All right. I hope you like this introduction. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any question left, just ask and I'll make sure to reply. So happy sculpting. <laughs>